This is Julian and I'm here in Berlin, Germany. And what we're gonna jump into in this video here is a segment from last night's live event where I talk about one of the biggest obstacles when it comes to true transformation and success, overcoming blind spots. You see, we are run by our comfort zone. It controls us and it hijacks our focus and will block out different opportunities for growth as a way of remaining stuck, as a way of just staying in the known. And unless you apply exactly what I talk about in this video here, you will remain stuck. Do not kid yourself. Do you wanna be one of those people who, at the end of your life, they write down on your tombstone, here lies a loser who remains stuck, or here lies a winner who jumped at different opportunities, who overcame those blind spots, who milked life to the fullest? Which one are you gonna be? The choice is yours. Sit back, pay attention, and enjoy. Blind spots are the enemy. What do I mean by this? You ever wonder why it's so hard for people to change? Or why, perhaps when you introduce some of this content to friends and family, they just aren't that into it? No? You might be like, ah, oh, look at this Julian guy. So amazing. I, can't, I confuse him with God, you know? <laughs> Yet, when you show me to your friends, do they see God? Yes. For those of you who say yes. Okay, cool. But no, most of the time they're like, what, you're into this? Self-help? Bettering yourself as a person? Working on yourself? Trying to be successful? Are you a loser? What's wrong with you? Why are you trying to be better? And why are you listening to this guy? I mean, look at him. Look at his hair. <laughs> right? And... That was the same with me when I started out. I'd show this to my friends. I'm like, hey, look, you can actually work on your personality, your social skills. Oh my God, this is crazy. We don't have to accept this. We can do something about our lives. And they were like, meh, it's a little weird. Yeah, it sounds a little weird. I don't know. I, I, I'd rather just kind of stay stuck. And it would always baffle me. I'm like, how can you not see the value in this? Why? Blind spots. I'm sure you've heard us human beings are creatures of habit. I'm sure you heard about the term, your comfort zone, right? right. Yes. Yes. We love our comfort zones, we don't wanna change. Now what does this mean? What's a blind spot? A blind spot is simply something you don't see. Why is it that we do have blind spots? Because our comfort zone runs us. And that leads me to our first point here. Your reticular activating system, your RAS. I'm sure you've heard of this before. Basically, your selective focus. What does this mean? Think about reality. There's just too much to take in. There's too much data, too much information. If you close your eyes right now, do it, close your eyes. Now open your mouth. No, I'm <laughs> Close your eyes. That was funny. <laughs> For real, close your eyes. And with your eyes closed, Let me ask you, what in this room is red? Keep your eyes closed. What's red in this room? Try to list it out. All the things that are red in this room. Now open your eyes. What are you doing now? Scanning for red. Red, red, red. What's red? What's red? Right? Why? Because suddenly with this question, the color red has value in your mind. What's red? You're filtering reality for that. And we do this with everything. If you're someone who, for example, lives in a state of fear, you're going to be filtering reality through this state. This state of fear is going to hijack your RAS. <gasps> are people staring at me? What are they going to think of me? Ooh, are they, are they judging me right now? Oh, did I wear anything appropriate? Oh, do I fit in with the, the dress code? Oh, what if Julian calls me out? Oh my God, what am I going to say? What if I don't say this? What's going to happen? Oh, uh, what if the people don't accept me? What if I say something stupid? Oh my God, uh, let's run out. That's what I focus on. Say you're in a state of anger. That's also going to hijack your RAS. You might be sitting here and your focus is like, I don't know about the AC here. Is the temperature to my liking? It's a little too hot. You know what? It's a little too cold. Uh, is the audio loud enough? I don't know if uh, I, I like the, the, the clothes that Julian wore here today. I was expecting the crazier clothes or the more conservative clothes. I don't know. Uh, I know the term RAS. I can't believe that. Oh, and the guy next to me or the girl next to me is stanky. Oh, God, this sucks. Just get me out of here. All right, your state hijacks your RAS and you look for things 
that are congruent to that state and that in turn fuel that state and becomes this feedback loop. That's just in terms of how you feel. This is hijacked by everything that is you, your comfort zone. And this is why it's very hard to change. This is me. I am an introvert. Hijack RAS. Okay, I'm an introvert. Let's filter everything through, I am introvert. You go online, you look up videos. Hey, here's a video to put yourself out there and be more social. Mm, he didn't say introvert. Let me look up another Julian video. Here's a video for introverts. And you'll look up things that reinforce what you already believe. Right? Everyone who's introverted, you'll see it. They'll reinforce, I'm introverted, I'm introverted, looking for content to help introverts. But by doing so, it reinforces that they're introverted and that they aren't outgoing or expressive, and it keeps them trapped. I am a loser. Let's look up videos to uh, get out of this loser paradigm. The more they do, it reinforces that they are a loser. It entrenches them in that paradigm. It reinforces that belief, that assumption. I'm not confident. I need to find a way to be confident. The more you do, the more you're telling yourself, I'm not confident. A lot of what we look for in terms of advice simply enhances the ego, enhances or confirms what we believe. It doesn't truly change us. We never break free. Things might temporarily get better in that same paradigm, building on those same assumptions, but we never truly get that permanent transformation that we're after. Okay, and this is why one of the biggest mistakes you'll see people make is, I will try to figure it out on my own. I'm gonna do it on my own, which is impossible. Why? Because you have those blind spots. Because you trying to figure it out on your own is simply reinforcing what you know. You need external feedback. You cannot figure it out on your own. And being very honest here, I had friends back in the day, 12, 13 years ago when I first started out myself. I started teaching this in 2010, but I started working on myself in 2006. People back then who were way ahead of me, who were trying to figure it out on their own. Where are they now? Still trying to figure it out on their own. And they are worse off now than before. More entrenched in those beliefs than before. You want another example? Think of an old person. How attached to their beliefs are they? Right? 100%. Say you tell an old person, hey, you know what? Um, this actually uh, happened to a friend of mine. His uh, dad was eating extremely unhealthy food. And he was like, hey, Julian, look, um, you know, my dad had some conditions and he's, he keeps eating unhealthy food. I try to talk to him and I tell him, hey, maybe eat a little healthier, but he won't. What's wrong? Why do you think? Because he's doubled down and doubled down and invested and invested in his ways. And this is something that we all have. We double down and invest in our ways. We never question them, and we would rather look for information that reinforces it. Why? Because it feels good. Who likes to feel like they're wrong? No one does. None of you want to feel like you're wrong. The best event from your ego's perspective here is me coming up on stage and reinforcing everything that you currently believe. That's it. Me reinforcing it and adding a couple sprinkles of new content you might not have heard before. Hey, whatever you're doing is exactly what you need to be doing. And here's some uh, fun little stories and a fun little tip and uh, have a great night. That's what your ego wants. Does your ego want to be challenged? Of course not. People go out, they try to work on socializing, putting themselves out there. They work on their social skills. They work on trying to be more confident. And they realize, you know what? Sometimes I get a little stifled. Anyone here get stifled, right? A little nervous, a little stuck in your head. Is what I'm saying good enough? So a lot of people are stifled. They're like, okay, I'm stifled. And I'm gonna look up content, courses and videos, seminars or events to help me not be stifled, right? How to never run out of things to say, an extremely uh, popular search term. How to get out of my head. 
how to just be me no matter who I talk to. Now, this is the stupid approach. Very stupid. It ranks for views on YouTube. A video saying, hey, how to never run out of things to say will rate very well. But it's very stupid. Why? Because they never question the assumption. The assumption is, I'm stifled. Now what? Right? Your RAS is hijacked. I'm stifled. Look for content and value to not get stifled. As opposed to, wait a minute. Why am I stifled? Why am I stifled to begin with? Because here's the thing. In a reality where you're stifled, does it make sense to work on not being stifled? Yes or no? Yes. Does it make sense to look up content to never run out of things to say? Yes or no? Yes. Does it make sense to look up content to not be so closed off? Yes. But we never ask ourselves, what if there is a paradigm, a reality, where it's way easier and all this is just taken care of? Because here's the thing. If you're not stifled, and you've all had this experience, you talk to someone you believe, you're outside their league or you're on the same level. Do you run out of things to say? No. Are you in your head nervous? No. It's only when someone passes that, oh, they're above me, that you start freaking out. That's your ceiling of success whenever you get stifled. So instead of being stifled and then looking for advice or content or tips to not be stifled, just never be stifled. Identify why you're stifled, let go of it, and now you enter this reality where you don't have to worry about all of this. We're just taken care of. Yet, most people will never question this assumption because they're trying to figure it out on their own and they're so invested in it. Even this idea, what do you mean not being stifled? That's impossible. It's very possible. The same with trying to build charisma. I want to be charismatic. Give me tips. Everyone is charismatic. All of you are charismatic, depending on who you talk to and what situation you're in. I've used this example before. A nerdy person, someone who's really into video games. They walk down the street, they're so shy, they can't even look at the world. They're looking at their feet, just walking down, like, don't talk to me, don't talk to me. You might see them, you're like, ugh, what a creep. You might try to talk to them, you're like, hey, oh, what time is it? They're like, yeah, like, scatter off. That person there, do they have charisma? Yes. Just not in public. When they get home, maybe not even with their family, their family's like, hey, how was your day? Like, yeah. scatter in their room. They're in their room and they turn on their PlayStation or Xbox. They put the headset on. And that little insect person who couldn't talk to anyone <laughs> lights up. Suddenly, it's like, you ready for this? And they just start chatting off in their headset, online, in the game. Someone so chatty, so confident, so charismatic, but only in that instance. We all have this. Maybe with your close friends, you're really charismatic. You meet a stranger, <laughs> right? So it's not that you're not charismatic, it's just that there's different situations that sometimes block that from coming out. Now, instead of doubling down on, I'm not charismatic, RAS, advice to be charismatic, what about identifying those blockages, letting go of them, and entering a paradigm, a reality, where you're by default charismatic and you don't have to worry about all those little tips and tricks. There's always an easier paradigm, an easier reality. Here's another one. Someone who has social anxiety. Would anyone here be nervous if I brought you up on stage in front of this crowd? Raise your hand if so. And ask you to say, be very authentic in front of this entire crowd. You'd freak out. Most people would. Okay, there's this thing where it's like, I'm anxious, how do I not be anxious? Social anxiety is huge. The fear of public speaking is um, one of people's biggest fears. For a lot of people, it feels like they're going to die. Now, say that's you, that was me. I feel like I'm going to die. I have social anxiety, RAS. Zzz. Advice to not be socially anxious. 
does this work? No. That is the stupid approach. Z I hear that um, if I do social anxiety challenges, I can progressively desensitize myself and reach a point where I feel comfortable in a situation like this. Is that smart or stupid? Stupid! Social anxiety challenges, trying to progressively desensitize yourself, and I hope I'm triggering a lot of you here, is stupid. If that's you, you are stupid. One person realizes it. Thank the Lord. Now, why is it stupid? Does it help? Say you're a little nervous and you start going out in public and say doing different challenges. Let me be a little loud. Let me sing a song in public. Will it actually help you be more comfortable in public? Yes or no? Yes. Yes, yes it will. However, what happens when you stop doing the challenges? Back. Zoom. You're back to ground zero. So what's your strategy here? Let me ask you that. Are you just going to do this for the rest of your life? You're 80. You're like, okay, grandchildren, going to go do my social anxiety challenges. <laughs> Is that your solution? Let me take my cane and let's do that. No. So it works as long as you keep doing it, but it never gets to the cause. So instead of assuming that you have social anxiety, now what? What about entering a paradigm where you don't have it? Question the assumption. Where does this come from? And here you also discover the whole, you could say, phenomenon of being triggered and having trauma. If you have social anxiety, you have trauma. Now we don't like hearing that. Trauma is a very heavy word, right? Any of you here uh, not have trauma? BS. As a human, you've all experienced trauma. You've all went through traumatic experiences. None of us are immune to it. Now, when we think experiencing a traumatic experience, we think, okay, extreme violence, abuse, war, so on and so forth. Is that traumatic, yes or no? Yes. No, not really. It is, of course it is. <laughs> yes. However, here's what we fail to address. We think, okay, what is traumatic from my perspective now as an adult? But what about from your perspective as a child? Right? What about a kid getting lost in a grocery store who's three or four? Could that perhaps be traumatic? As a kid, I lost my parents. I'm going to die. You truly believe that. Lie detector, I'm going to die. Your survival instinct kicks in. What about being mocked in school? Could that be traumatic? Yes. yes. Why? As a child, the classroom's the world. If you don't fit in this classroom, you're going to die. We all experience trauma, but we fail to address hmm, our limited perception of the world as a child. Now, because of that, all of us who have social anxiety here today are actually in the moment being triggered by a past traumatic experience. Say you were shamed for putting yourself out there. People mocked you in class. Or a very common one is people find out you like someone in the class. Oh, Julian and Susie sitting at a tree. <gasps> I'm going to die. And what do we do to cope? Okay, let's take the part of me that likes Susie and let's never, ever be that again. I do a presentation, people laugh. They might not even laugh. Someone might smile, but we interpret it that way. I'm going to die. <gasps> let's never, ever express ourselves again. Now, that happens when you're young. That's never me. And then you live your life. Here you are as an adult, consciously. If you were to come up here on stage, is your life at risk? Yes or no? No. No. So why is it that <gasps> that same fear of life or death kicks in? Trauma. Exactly. It has nothing to do with what's out here. It's something inside of you that's getting poked at, that's getting triggered. Whenever your response is disproportionate to reality, you are getting triggered. Now, this is why it never works. I'm getting triggered. Trauma's being poked at. Let me numb myself to it with social anxiety challenges. No. Until you address whatever's getting triggered inside of you and process it and release it, 
you will be a slave to it. Now, does this mean never do social anxiety challenges? No, I love social anxiety challenges, but here's the difference. I don't use social anxiety challenges to numb myself. I use social anxiety challenges to trigger myself in order to let go of what's being triggered inside of me. And guess what? When you do, suddenly your response is proportionate to reality. And all those things like, okay, how to not be anxious. People say this, social anxiety, you just gotta live with it. No, that's insane. You know, going up and saying hi to people, approach anxiety, you just gotta live with it. No, you idiot, you gotta address the trauma. And then you have an appropriate response to reality. The same with a breakup, by the way. People who get triggered by, by a breakup. Insane, right? Is a breakup fun? No. no. But, and of course, there's a grieving process. You're, you're separating from someone, there's a lot of shared history, a lot of connection. But is it something that should run you for years to come? Five, 10, 20, 30 years. You'll see people, old people, Oh, but my first wife, triggered. <laughs> right? And that's why it never works. They never question the assumptions. They never question the map in which they're operating. And this is why you must find a way to get external feedback to help you let go of that map. Because that map, whatever you're feeling, your reality, your comfort zone will hijack your RAS, and it'll just become this feedback loop. Don't trust your friends and family. This is harsh. Screw your friends and screw your family. Now, why am I saying this? Of course, no, I mean, of course, trust them in certain aspects, but don't trust them in terms of your growth. If you ask a friend, hey, um, so I'm trying to work on myself, what advice would you give me? Or you ask a family member, hey, um, help me. Are they going to try to help you, yes or no? Yes. yes. They care about you, they love you. However, most likely they're in the same reality as you, so you won't get that outside perspective. And secondly, they will not want to compromise the established dynamics. They will not want to compromise the established relationship. Say we're really good friends and say, there's something you do that's really weird. And me telling you this is gonna make you feel super awkward, trigger you, and just, it'll never be the same between us. Would I rather tolerate that weird thing he does and keep remaining friends or make things really uncomfortable? What do you think? Tolerate it. So you can ask your friends for feedback and they will try to help and they'll give you some, but there's always going to be a cap, a limit. If I get brutally honest, this person's gonna hate me and will never be able to be the same and this friendship will not be the same and no, my comfort zone is this friendship, I want this friendship to be the same, right? So you'll get some advice, but not the harsh truth. The same with family members. They don't want to create chaos and drama in the relationship. If things are going great, they're not going to say, hey, you need to fix this, 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 this. And you're like, well, screw you, especially because it triggers you. And now oh, you're confronted with the reality of, oh, I got to change my comfort zone. Oh. And then you'll blame them. And it's, it's endless. It's easier to be like, everything's great. Everything's great. Let's just accept it and be chill. Chillness above all else. Okay. So don't trust them. Love them. But don't just get advice from them. Instead, and this is harsh but true, find honest coaches and pay them for feedback. Honest means telling you the truth, not sugarcoating it, not saying, hey, here's what's right, not caressing your ego, right? Telling you the honest truth that triggers you. And the reason you pay them is, one, it creates receptivity, investment creates receptivity, and two, it's what allows that real advice to stick. Let me explain. In terms of investment equals receptivity. Think of a video online, a free YouTube video, a five minute video. If it's free, how receptive are you going to be? 
not that receptive. You probably watch a ton of YouTube videos where you're like, oh, it's free, let me click on that and let me open a bunch of browsers and check my phone at the same time because it's free. You haven't invested anything. There's no skin in the game. Say you watch that same five minute video and you spend $1,000. Would your experience watching the video be different? Would you perhaps stay focused on the video instead of opening other tabs? Right? Would you take notes as opposed to just watching the video and be like, oh, okay. What about if you paid uh, $10,000 for the five minute video? Would you rewatch it a ton of times? Right? You'd probably also be thinking in terms of return on investment, ROI. I'm $10,000 minus right now. How am I going to get that back? How am I going to apply this advice to my life to make that money back? With a free video, because there's nothing you've invested, you're not going to think that way. You're just going to look for entertainment. What's a bonus from this video? It's all bonus because it's free. So that's one thing. The other reason you want to pay them for feedback is not just the opening, but it's because it keeps you there. Most of you here, if I told you straight up to your face what you need to hear, you would run off. One, you probably wouldn't hear it because there's no receptivity, and two, you'd leave. There are things that I can only say at paid events, and depending on how much you pay, there are different things that I can say. At a Transformation Mastery Live Advanced, as an example, who here is coming, by the way, the Advanced? Raise your hand. Anyone here? Okay. For you here, brace yourselves. Who here has been to an Advanced? Okay. You know. <laughs> Sunday. Um, this is a small group one. It's, I don't screw around with that one. Like, he was there, you were there last weekend, and it's like, you get the harsh feedback. People are breaking down in tears. People are screaming. People are getting like upset and triggered in ways you cannot imagine. If I did that to you here, swear to God, you'd just run off. You're like, why would I tolerate this? Why would I listen to this guy telling me this stuff? Uh, I'm out. There's not that, oh, I'm trapped in this. I'm invested. I got to listen to it. There's no rope that's pulling you towards it. You just run off. Most people aren't ready to handle what they need to hear. They'd rather bury their head in the sand. That's what investment does. It creates the opening and it keeps you there to hear that harsh truth. It's not comfortable. People think, oh, change and transformation is so comfortable. No, it's horrible. That's why your friends and family won't tell you the truth. It'll trigger every part of you. <coughs> but that's what you need. You want to truly change? You got to hear that harsh truth. You got to find people where they will tell you the truth. There's no agenda. And you got to pay them for it to one, be ready to receive and to keep you there. That is the only way. People don't like it. But hey, that's why most people fail. You want another harsh truth? Most of you here, nothing will change. For most of you here, this will just be a fun Thursday night. Like going to see a show or a concert. Hey, that was great. Remember that Julian guy? Yeah. And nothing changed. That's the truth. That's what I realized. Since 2010, traveling around, most people stay stuck. Most people will suck. Forever. For 10 years only, and then they kill it. No, forever. It's true. We hate hearing it. And, and in our mind, you're probably thinking like, oh, it's not me, but it's different for me. No. Okay. So remember this. Your biggest sticking point right now is that you're blocked off to hearing the advice you need to hear. Even the questions that you ask reinforce this. Huge. I tell this to people who are on my um, live calls. Okay. I do this in a mentoring program. And um, I tell them, listen. You all have your questions you want to ask me. And by all means, ask those questions. However, pay more attention to the questions that other people ask than your question. Because your question is fueled by your comfort zone. I'm saying this and I'm trying to break out, but unconsciously I'm trying to stay stuck and reinforce this. So the questions that you ask, you'll get great answers that make you feel good. But then someone else might ask a question and you get the answer that you should have gotten. They ask the question you should have asked. Never forget that. Pay more attention 
to other people's questions than yours. Still ask yours, but realize there is a bias. Part of you is trying to stay stuck and reinforce what you know. Your RAS is being hijacked. Hardest part about change is seeing the behind the scenes. It's like snapping out of the matrix, right? Here's another example. You're in Berlin. Say I give you a map of Los Angeles. Say I give it to you from the moment you're born, right? You're born, here you are. And I give you a map. I'm like, hey, here's uh, the map of LA. Go find your way around Berlin. Are you going to find your way around Berlin, yes or no? No. no. It's the wrong map. Let's just say you look around you, and everyone else also has the map of LA, and they're walking around Berlin being like, oh, the street names are so different. Someday, it'll, maybe it'll make sense. And say you spend your entire life trying to find your way around Berlin with the map of LA. And it's not working. And you're, you're banging your head against the wall. You're like, what's wrong? Why is it not working? And you might look up some YouTube videos. And you'll see people being like, hey, one tip to find your way around Berlin. And you click on the video. And you see someone saying, hey, um, you just need to hustle more. That's the solution. Okay, let me take that map and hustle more. Didn't work. You know what? You just need to be more positive, have a more positive outlook on life. Okay, is that going to work? No. Then you come to an event. Might be an event like this. And you have questions. Julian, uh, on this street, on the cross street, how do I... Uh, no matter what I tell you, is it going to help you? No, because it's based on the wrong map. You need to see outside that map. You need to realize you have the wrong map. Now, let's just say, sinking into this perspective, you spent your entire life every single day, every second of the day, trying to find your way around Berlin with the map of LA. And I come up and I tell you, hey, um, it's uh, the wrong map. Here's the uh, Berlin map. Are you gonna be happy about that? Are you going to accept it? No. Because you've spent your entire life, you're like, I've invested so much time, energy, frustration. I've bought all these courses. I've done everything. I've watched all these videos. I will make this map work. As opposed to, oh, I've been screwing up my entire life. Blind spot. Just like my friend whose dad will not change his diet. Hey, eat the salad. Hey, <laughs> me eating the salad right now means I've been screwing up my entire life. Means my health is horrible. I'm going to keep doing what I've been doing. I'm not going to challenge that. That is my comfort zone. For most people, failure is their comfort zone. Not sustaining a mediocre life, failing. And you look around you and there are so many failures that you think it's normal and you think it's fine. For real. Most people are complete failures. Walk around the street, be very honest with yourself. How many people do you see who are like, wow, I would totally uh, switch places with that person? None. If you think of the human race, we are a race of failures. A miserable race. We are the most miserable race ever where no one's happy to be alive, no one's happy with the life they're living, and 99% of us are complete, utter failures. Welcome to humanity. And then we look around and we rationalize. Well, they're failing too. It's the human condition. Better just accept it. Yeah. Yes. Right? Yeah. You'll look around here like, well, Julian did say uh, most of us would fail, so I guess it's not too bad if I'm one of them. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. So, take this to heart. This will change your life. Understanding this, and once more, trying to get as much outside perspectives and feedback that are honest that affect you at a core that you don't just block off. And this is also why, by the way, whatever I say here today that triggers you, offends you the most, is most likely what you need to hear. If you go through this event feeling very comfortable the entire time, you're failing. You should get pissed off at times. You should feel very uncomfortable at times. There should be times where you want to speak up and disagree. If not, you're failing. And all I'm doing is just stroking that ego. That's all I'm doing. Okay? That's all I'm doing.